Greetings everyone. In this video we Heman and Unmol have tried to give an insight on how gray code synchronous counters work and what should be our approach to create such counters. Further we have also shown simulation based on our logic. We will start off by seeing what is gray code. Then understand the difference between synchronous and asynchronous counter. We will then see the roadmap to the approach we will be following to build a 3-bit gray code synchronous counter. We will further see the simulation based on the circuit we build. And finally, finish off by seeing the prospects of scaling the counter to 4-bit. In this subsection, we will learn what is gray code and how to represent numbers in gray code. Gray code, also known as reflected binary code is named after Frank Gray. The bit position in gray code is of no significance and two successive values differ by a change of only one bit. Priority of bit change decreases from end, rightmost bit, to beginning, leftmost bit. And of course, the repetition of previously used bit combination is not allowed. As you can see there is change on only one bit at a time. As seen in the highlighted example. The rightmost bit is given priority to change from 0110 to 0111. So change of 0110 to 0100 or 1110 will be wrong, as the potential of change decreases from right to left. Note, make sure previously used combination of bits is not reused again. In this subsection, we will learn the difference between synchronous and asynchronous counter. In synchronous counter, all flip-flops are triggered with the same clock simultaneously. Hence it is faster due to less propagation delay. While, in asynchronous counter, different flip-flops are triggered with different clocks, not simultaneously. Hence it is slower due to high propagation delay. In this video, we will be using the same clock for JK flip-flops making the circuit synchronous. So that it can operate on higher frequency. And has way less cumulative delay than asynchronous counters. In this subsection, we will see the steps that we are going to follow to build a 3-bit synchronous gray code counter. The roadmap we will be following is as follows. A quick glance of what is JK flip-flop. Second we will make a truth table with previous and next step of the counter with the help of excitation table. Next we will create k-maps and evaluate the expressions. Finally, we will design circuit based on these expressions. In this subsection, we will build a 3-bit gray code synchronous counter. Firstly we will understand, what is JK flip-flop, and how does it work. Assuming prior knowledge of flip-flops, the circuit and truth table are shown below. As one can observe, if J and K data input are different, that is high and low, then the output Q takes the value of J at the next clock edge. If J and K are both low then no change occurs. If J and K are both high at the clock edge then the output will toggle from one state to the other. The important thing to observe and note here is that one can come up with equation for JK flip-flop as Q of T plus 1 is equal to J times Q complement of T plus K complement times Q of T. Pause the video to grasp the above mentioned points and see for yourself. Next we will build a truth table with previous and next step of counter with the help of JK flip-flop's excitation table. Here we have three columns. Present state. Shows the progression of states through which the counter advances when it is clocked. In this case progression of gray codes from 0 to 7. Next state. Is the state that the counters goes from its present state upon application of a clock pulse. In this case, the next gray code with respect to present state in a circular fashion from 1 to 7 in gray coded bits. Finally, we have inputs for JK flip-flops according to present state and next state bit. JQ2 and KQ2 is flip-flop inputs for transition of bits corresponding to Q2. Similarly JQ1 and KQ1 corresponding to Q1 and JQ0 and KQ0 corresponding to Q0. As we saw the truth table of JK flip-flops the transition from 0 to 0 will result in a J and K input of 0 and we don't care what the value of K is. Note, the cross represent don't care condition. Similarly from 0 to 1 we will have 1 and don't care condition. From 1 to 0. Don't care condition and 1. And finally the transition from 1 to 1 will result in a J and K input of don't care and 0 respectively. 
Pause the video to figure out the flip-flop inputs for each bit transition for yourself. Next we will create K-maps for each flip-flop inputs based on the truth table. K-maps for JQ2, KQ2, JQ1, KQ1 and JQ0, KQ0. Based on input of Q2, Q1. Horizontally arranged. And Q0. Vertically arranged. Now we will fill the K-maps according to the truth table we built before. After filling the 0, 1 or don't care condition. Pause the video to see for yourself. Now we will group the cells to get the expression for all the K-maps. The highlighted cells are grouped together in each K-maps to find input expressions for JK flip-flops. Pause the video to see for yourself. Next on our roadmap, we will evaluate the expressions using K-maps. Finally we obtain the following expressions for the J and K inputs of each flip-flop. JQ2 is, Q1, and Q0 complement. KQ2 is, Q1 complement, and Q0 complement. JQ1 is, Q2 complement, and Q0. KQ1 is, Q2 and Q0. JQ0 is, Q2 X or Q1 whole complement. And KQ0 is, Q2 X or Q1. Pause the video to see for yourself. Final step is to create circuit, based on our expressions and logic. We can design the circuit from JK flip-flops and basic gates, with the help of the expressions seen before. The input is Q0, Q1 and Q2, and the output is next state value of the input. The inputs are passed through the gates, designed according to the expression seen before. This acts as J and K inputs for the flip-flops, which is triggered by the same clock thus making it synchronous. Each clock pulse paves the way for the transition of present state to next state. The output is then again passed as the input to obtain the next state upon the upcoming clock pulse. This cycle continues and states repeats, after all seven states back to 0000, thus creating a gray code, synchronous counter. Pause the video to see for yourself. In this subsection, we will see the simulation for 3-bit gray code synchronous counter. We will add same clock to all three flip-flops and see their state change in action. Here for visualization purpose. Red LED, represents Q0. Green LED, represents Q1. And blue LED, represents Q2. In this subsection, we will see other prospects of Gray Code Synchronous Counter. We can further scale up the counter and add more functionalities. Next is a quick glance on building a 4-bit Gray Code Counter using D Flip Flops. Here is the truth table for present and next state. Pause the video to see for yourself. We will then use present state values to get the expression of next state values with the help of K-maps. K-maps for next state are built, from present state. And the corresponding values of next state are filled as zeros and ones. Then the ones are grouped, giving the expression of next state values with respect to present state has. Q3 is, A and D, or, A and C, or, B and C complement and D complement. Q2 is, B and C complement, or, B and D, or, A, complement and C and D complement. Q1 is, A and D complement, or, A, 
and B and D, or, A, complement and B complement and D. And Q naught is, A, complement and B complement and C complement, or, A, and B and C complement, or, A, complement and B and C, or, A, and B complement and C. Pause the video to see for yourself. We can design the circuit from D flip-flops and basic gates. With the help of the expressions seen before, the inputs are passed through the gates, designed according to the expressions seen before. This acts as D inputs for the flip-flops, which is triggered by the same clock thus making it synchronous. Each clock pulse paves the way for the transition of present state to next state. The output is then again passed as the input to obtain the next state upon the upcoming clock pulse. This cycle continues and states repeats, after all 16 states back to 0000, 000, 000, 000 thus creating a 4-bit gray code, synchronous counter. Pause the video to see for yourself. What next? Well be it counters or any other logical circuit, the applications are limitless. Adding more functionalities, playing with components for optimized results with less error, or just having fun intriguing one's curiosity to build and understand something great. At last sky's the limit. So get your horses running, connect those electrical components and change the future as we see today forever. We hope our explanations were concise and clear. We used Circuit Verse for simulation, Kazam for screen recording, Draw.io for making circuits, and text to voiceorg to convert text to voice. Hope you had fun. Thank you for watching this video.